Yes, in the country and pressure from the people. These initiatives need all the support of the national government and the international development partners. And I salute all those who came on board. I believe the success of any one county takes the entire country forward. I believe that as a country, we are as strong as our counties. And I want to give the government of Kenya Kwanzaa free advice that the national government does not need to compete with the county governments. The county government complement the national government and therefore the national government needs to support the county governments to deliver. From the outset, therefore, I wish to appeal to our development partners to consider county governments as competent and critical actors in the engagements aimed at realizing national and global development goals. I appeal to the development partners to scale up their engagement with counties. I make this appeal because I'm aware of the attitudes, actions, and pronouncement by some senior national government officials that are meant to dissuade or block development partners from engaging with the counties. I wish to assure our visitors to this country that our counties are managed by some of the most experienced politicians and technocrats in this country who have very clear ideas of what needs to be done. If only they could get the support. Homer Bay is striving to create a space and cut a niche that is very much in order. I believe counties should co cooperate and compete at the same time. The biggest challenge that counties, just like the national government, have to deal with is growth, which has to be both horizontal and vertical. Horizontally, counties have to spread the benefits of development to regions and communities that have been left behind. Vertically, our actions must meet expectations about the quality of life, services, and infrastructure. If the infrastructure for vertical and horizontal growth is not laid early, we will replicate the uneven development that has dodged the national government since independence 60 years ago. Homa Bay has identified agro-allied industries, that is, fishing and aquaculture, tourism, and growing of cotton and other crops for their value chain to help spur prosperity. I concur that agriculture and its value chain and blue economy are holders of real potential for the takeoff. However, to unlock opportunities in agriculture, some radical and bold measures will have to be taken. We are never going to feed ourselves or commercialize agriculture until we wean our people out of the subsistence farming. A situation where food shortage is a persistent feature even among people who identify themselves as farmers point to something very wrong. Land holding sizes continue to decline. Yield per hectare continues to decline, yet population is rising. It won't be easy. It was never easy to introduce large-scale farming even in Europe or in South Korea. But we must start laying down the infrastructure for the large-scale agriculture in this region. That means educating our people and also laying the ground for irrigation and mechanization of agriculture. You have to diversify and explore other crops. To this end, I appreciate the effort by Homer Bay and neighbors to venture into crops for edible oils like palm, soya, 
groundnuts, and renewed interest in the cotton. This region once had a thriving edible oils industry that processed sunflower, cotton, and groundnuts. We need, we need them back. And we are happy with airport features being made by Homer Bay County here. When we were growing up as small children, cotton was the main cash crop in this region. And there were generies in Busia, Luanda, in Siaya, Nderi, in Homa Bay here and Kindu Bay. There were generies here. And women used to take the cotton to the market on market days. And they had mobile weighing skills. They would weigh the cotton. And mama would be paid cash on delivery. And she would then transit to go and buy fish or meat in the market. That died when we introduced the monopoly of cotton lint and seed marketing board. Cotton was delivered to the board, no payment. Six months later, children were being sent away from school. That is where people stopped doing cotton. Uh, we need to have science work for our people. In this regard, I propose that county governments be given more say, access and roles in agricultural research bodies such as the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, CALRO, Kenya Seed Company, the Kenya Forestry Research Institute, and the Agricultural Finance Corporation. The idea is to ensure that research and finance reach small smallholder farmers who are the bulk work of our agriculture. Currently, there is inadequate flow of information to farmers about the new crop and livestock varieties. Fishing has sustained our communities in this region for generations. It is currently under serious strain, partly because we are relying on the same tools our ancestors used. In addition, the lakes, the swamps, and rivers have been polluted and degraded, making them unable to produce enough fish for domestic use and commercial purposes. We have to invest in the quality of the water environment of the region's rivers, the lakes, even as we develop fish ponds and cages. Let us invest in the restoration of the indigenous plantations of our rivers, swamps and lake basins that are known to support the natural breeding of fish. Just like they are doing with mangroves at the coast, I wish to see our counties take the lead in restoring the indigenous vegetation along our water bodies. I have been encouraged by efforts to market this region as a potential tourism destination. Homer Bay has put a considerable effort on the Ruma National Park and its treasures. And you have seen here that this is the only home for the Rhone antelope. We need to put more joint effort on tourism and go beyond wildlife. Uh, but I'm just about to get you an investor in tourism to come and put up a lodge at uh, Ruma National Park. Let us venture into areas like nature, water sports, and cultural and heritage tourism. Today, the national government does not view Lake, Lake Region as a tourist, a tourist destination that warrants government support and investment. The region does not feature much in activities and locations related to tourism. We must not wait. County governments here need to take it upon themselves and be more aggressive in marketing the region in local and international markets. These efforts will, however, not yield much without the hard infrastructure of roads, electricity, and internet connectivity. Transport infrastructure remains 
poor along the lake basin. Majority of roads across the region are unpaved. Despite improvements, electricity is still mostly unavailable, unreliable, and very expensive. Most people are unable to afford electricity connection costs. Collaboration between the county and natural governments has resulted in improved air transport through rehabilitation of airstrips. But much more needs to be done, especially with regard to roads and electricity. One of the solutions to the infrastructure problem is for the national government to surrender more function to the counties. And I'll give an example. The Kenya Rural Roads Authority, CARA, the Kenya Urban Roads Authority, and uh, renewable in, uh, electrification and renewable energy corporation all need to be handed over to counties. And I want to say this without fear of contradiction. I was the Minister of Roads uh, 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 Housing and uh, uh, Public Works. I'm the one who introduced Kura, Kera, and Kenha. But that was under a unified system of government. With a devolved system of government, you don't need Kera, you don't need Kura. All of them should be surrendered to the county governments. Um, freeing these bodies would empower counties to develop low-cost alternative sources of energy like solar parks, wind energy, geothermal power that is abundant in this lake region. This will also increase rural access to electricity and spur the expansion of the road network of all class C and D roads to bitumen standards. The overall aim is, to, is, the, is increased trade and investment in the region that requires a different kind of infrastructure removing the barriers that prevent the attainment of full potential. As much as possible, counties have to reform and deregulate in order to perform. Make your regulations and processes to compare with the best in the world. Do not bog the people down with the taxes and levies, rules and regulations that only make doing business more difficult make doing business not only easier, but also cheaper. I encourage you to make doing business matter by insisting on IT-based transactions, particularly in the procurement of goods and services and payment for government services. At all times, we must never forget that much as we need to grow and be competitive, you have an obligation to be caring and compassionate. Create the infrastructure for the people to take care of themselves. Then watch the people rise. I am very encouraged by what you have seen today here in, in Homer Bay. And I just want to end by encouraging the governor. She has started well in what she's doing. She needs to continue and we'll get all our support. We are committed to supporting all our governors in the Azimio counties and also those with whom we have uh, coalitions, like in Nairobi County, the governor of Nairobi. We will give you all the support that you require to succeed. We want to ensure that uh, what we set out to achieve is achieved through the county governments. But where we are right now, we are at a very, very critical stage. You will know that we had NADCO, which was chaired by my colleague Stephen Kalonzo Musioka. 
and Ms. Aichungwa. They produced a report, and that report, I'm told, was been approved by Parliament. That report should be handed over to us formally. And once it's handed over to us, we'll ensure that it is implemented fully, all the recommendations in that report. Secondly, um, but let, let me respond to some issues being raised, some fears. I'm not going anywhere. I'm around. I've been running around trying to get support for different heads of state. I was with some in Namibia just the other day. And I went to the president of Uganda after I had talked to him, to go and ask for his support. And then we met there with Mr. Ruto, who had also gone there, to talk about the issues they're having with oil, the G2G. He was his minister for uh, energy. So after we talked about my candidature, they talked about the issue of oil among themselves but I asked for their support. And both of them agreed that they would support me. President Museveni said he would be the one to propose me as the chair of African Union Commission. And I said, thank you very much. But I'm not going away. Addis Ababa, as Charity said, is only two hours away from Nairobi. I'm available. Whenever I'm called, I will answer. I'm ready to work with you people. But what is important is that we must ensure that what we set out to do is eventually achieved and accomplished. We have said, and you also, some of you may be forgetting, we said that we are unbogable. We are unbogable. We are also unpangarable. You cannot be, you cannot be pangered. Who can pangoa? Who can pangoa? Who can bogoa? Who, who can bogoa? We are, we are, we are unbogrebu. Therefore, you have no fear at all. We are unbogrebu, and we will get there. Thank you very much.